What's up guys, let's continue with this preview or overview of the mass balance introduction. This video is essentially to see what you're going to see in this block, MB1. And probably you haven't seen before the video on the overview of the course, you should, because this is not, even though it says it's the introduction and it's MB1, this is a part in theoretic. We're going to start to see some theory and some problems. If you want to see the overview of all the course, you should go to the MB0 video, which is the overview of the course. And essentially we're going to see two sections. Section number one is theory, basic processes, chemical engineering, and a lot of theory and concepts such as system, process, unit operations, streams, flows, variables, process variables, flow diagrams, block diagrams, and we're going to start seeing why we need to do mass balances, especially in chemical engineering. Now, once you get that, this is very important, guys. It's theory. It's just read the definition, understand it. And once you get it, we're going to start doing uh, mass balances, only the basics, of course. We're going to see in MB2 and MB3 and MB4, those are let's say mass balances with some theory, for example this is single phase, this is multiple phase and this is in transient state. But right now we're going to see just the basics such as for example multiple units, mass balance with reaction, no reaction, whatever. We're going to see that in the next slide. So as I told you guys, if you really, really wanted to know what we're going to see in the first section, theory and basic definitions, is to understand the process what's a process and the difference between a chemical process. Uh, unit operation is also very important understanding that a pump is one unit operation, it increases pressure. A reactor is a unit operation because it reacts something. A dryer is a unit operation because it, it dries something, etc. Uh, we're going to see also streams and flows, which essentially is a pipeline which has, I don't know, maybe a certain amount of gas or mass or whatever per unit time. Process variables are very important pressure, temperature, composition, mass flow, mole flow, etc. Now we will need to understand first what's a block diagram, probably you have seen them, you have this and then goes out, maybe this is a reactor. And then we're going to do something a little bit more technical, for example, flow diagram, you have distillation column. You're not going to use a block right now, we're going to, to use a column and then you make it, you pump it and you send this and you recycle this here. This is a little bit more technical, you need to know some stuff. It's still not very technical as the pipe and di instrumentation diagram, but you're going to see also this. Then we will need to understand the types of systems that exist. Open system is essentially a continuous system in which, I don't know, maybe the atmosphere is the pressure here and you have these 10 kilograms per second and 10 kilograms per second go out. Closed system is, for example, a reactor which you cannot take stuff inside and the stuff inside cannot go out until you open it, so that's a closed system. And isolated system is the same stuff, but now you cannot even change temperature or heat with the, the reactor here. Don't worry, it's just an explanation. If you really want to understand them, go to the video. And finally we see the mass balance basics. Now that's section one, let's continue with section two, what you're going to see. It's the mass balance application. It's not only theory, we're going to do some problems and understand, for example, the principle, what's be behind that mass balance, how or why can we do mass balances. We're going to derive and get an equation, which we'll be using in all the course. It's, I love it because it's like the master equation of mass balance. Now. We're going to see mass balance in steady, unsteady, also called transient state, and semi-batch, which is a mixture of these two. <coughs> then diagram construction, we're going to see how to construct or build a diagram. We're going to know how to scale up. For example, if you did a process that produces 10 kilograms, and maybe your boss comes and tells you, 
I want the process to be 100 kilograms. How do you get that? All the streams, compositions, etc. How do you change them in order to get that same process but with this scale up? Basis of calculation is a very, very important concept. Actually, there are many problems that need you, need you to choose a basis of calculation. If you don't choose it, you will have always one extra variable. That means one degree of freedom, which means that the problem is not set. So if you don't set a basis of calculation, you will not be able to solve that. We're going to see that and the degree of freedom in this variable equation, counting. What does that mean? Essentially, you know that certain amount of variables need certain amount of equations. You cannot solve 1 equals x plus y if you don't have the value of x. You have one equation, two variables, it's impossible to solve. Then we're going to see how to attack or generally attack with a method methodology. How do you start doing the problem? You don't just read it and start drawing the diagram and drawing equations, writing whatever pops into your mind in order to calculate that? No. We're going to start by step, step by step, and you will try to solve it with this methodology, which I think is very cool. It's in the book. I didn't choose it. I do write some tips on it, but essentially it's the one on the book. Now, mass balance in steady state, we're going to see, of course, first one unit with no reaction. It's the easiest one. Then we're going to understand what's a recycle, what's a bypass, and we continue to a mass balance with one chemical reaction. Then we're going to understand also mass balances with multiple units, not only one unit. We're going to see two units and more than two units. For example, you have a reactor and then a separator. That's two units. And for example, if you continue this to a distillation unit, this is a multiple unit. And maybe you have a recycle here and a bypass, whatever. Now, uh, mass balance with chemical reaction is one of the most, not difficult, but complex uh, parts in the course. Many students have problems, especially because they have no good basis of chemistry. They don't know stoichiometry, they don't understand the limiting reactant, they don't know how to balance an equation, they don't understand quite well what's conversion and not even selectivity and yield, they don't even know what's that and they come and they, they if they don't in, even understand stoichiometry it's almost impossible they get selectivity and yield and I think the master or the most important part here is this one, extent of reaction which is the one that's going to help us to do the mass balances in chemical reaction then let's continue with mass balance in chemical equilibrium this is one reaction, we've already seen how to treat reactions, but what happens when they are in equilibrium? What does that mean? It means that at certain temperature and pressure, they form certain amount of A and certain amount of B. Now, there, then we go for multiple reactions, not only one reaction. That's also kind of tricky, but if you understand or understood how to treat one chemical reaction, this is easy. Therefore, we continue with mass balance in atomic species and molecular species. It sounds very fancy, but it's not. This is do a mass balance in carbon, in hydrogen, in oxygen. And this will be, for example, do a mass balance on CO2, a mass balance in H2O, a mass balance in methane. As you can see, this is, has one carbon, it has hydrogen and oxygen. Or you can either use it atomic or mass balance it with molecular species. Then we're going to see purge, which is essentially when you have a, a system and you take out something so you don't get infinite recycled stuff. And finally, but not least, we're going to see combustion, which is a very, very important part. I know a lot of industries, a lot of uh, factories which you need to do combustion, so that's good. You're going to understand what's excess air, theoretical oxygen. Of course, you need to know the air composition and all that. So that was the introduction or the overview of this blog, guys. Hopefully you're interested. I think this is the most important blog of all. And yeah, essentially, that was everything. See you in the next video.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.